Hey, we are in Virgin, Utah, and this is my Cube 215 2019 bike check. I get asked quite frequently how I set up my bike for rampage and what I do differently. So we're gonna do a complete bike check and we're gonna go over everything, especially suspension. And I'm going to explain how I set up the bike uh, for rampage, especially for big hits. So this bike uh, is a size large actually. Um, I chose a size large just because it's longer, meaning it's more stable and that gives me a bit more confidence whether when it's very steep or on big impacts and big jumps. I'm really liking this bike. Uh, chain stays are pretty short, 435 millimeters. Head tube angle is around 63 uh, degrees. Uh, it has quite a low bottom bracket, which makes it like super playful and easy to corner, easy to pop. But at the same time, I don't ever smash my cranks on the ground. Um, so yeah, really liking it. It's an aluminum frame. And that's the same bike I'm usually, well, same frame I'm usually riding in the bike park or on your bandone. For suspension, uh, for this trip, and especially to ride the Rampage line, I do stuff quite differently. So first thing I've done, I actually didn't do it at last year's Rampage, uh, but I'm doing it during this trip, is I went up a size in terms of, uh, of spring. So this is a 550 pound spring. Usually in Whistler, I run a 500. I only run a 550 some, for some your bandone. Uh, but on a terrain like Rampage, the impacts are so big that I find it makes the bike a bit safer, uh, less bottom out and more control on, on the big impacts. Still on the shock, so that's a, a DVO suspension jade. Uh, I'm actually riding my high speed compression nearly locked, uh, just to get you know the more support on the big impact. And my low speed is pretty close, but not fully close, just so I can keep a bit of, of traction, especially when it's like steep and loose. I also run a slower rebound than usually. Uh, just to avoid to get bucked on, on big impact, like if I case a jump or, or just on big impact in general, that gets the bike like you know a bit safer. For the front, uh, we have the DVO Onyx uh, Double Crown. Uh, I'm actually so one of the main thing I change is the high speed compression is pretty much locked, just like on the rear shock. Uh, my low speed is where it's at usually, so this basically is six click and I'm at clicks number three, just to keep a fork that's going to track uh, pretty good, especially at slow speed when I'm, gonna, when I'm braking. I run actually all the volume spacer in the air chamber. So there is five volume spacer and I run the five of them. Uh, that makes the fork more progressive, so that helps out on, uh, on big impact. And that way I don't bottom out the front as easily. For high pressure, I run 100 PSI on this fork. It's a bit more than I normally run. Uh, but in order to control the big impact, I mostly play with the high speed and uh, with the volume spacers. This fork has an adjustment called OTT, uh, which stands for off the top, which is basically a sensitivity adjustment. What people don't really realize at Trump is that yes, there is big heat and, uh, and some you know, high speed compression, but also there is a lot of uh, braking control and you want to get the maximum grip you can and you still want to have that stiff feeling on the bike. So that's why that adjustment is really convenient because I can set it up so I have you know, as much traction and as much comfort as I can when I'm braking and going down steep stuff. For wheels, I'm uh, trusting the E13 LG1R. So they're actually carbon rims and they, they all done amazing. I've had those wheels for you know, now like three years. I trust them on any condition, absolutely love them. Super light. Stiff, but not too stiff either, so you still get that traction and you know, extremely reliable. Um, I'm using as well the E13 tubeless valve and E13 chain guide. For tires, I'm using the Hutchinson Toro 235. So that's a new tire coming out, the Griffus, and I thought it would be a better idea to use the Toro because of the thread patent. So basically the Toro is, is very aggressive, um, and I thought it would be a good idea on the you know, steep and sandy shoots. This tire um, has a stronger casing. It has a 25 millimeter uh, reinforcement under the, under the knobs, and that makes it you know, super reliable and, and really stiff when you come into a big compression, and that also helps a lot with the damping, so you get uh, you know, better traction overall. In terms of crank lengths, I'm using 170 millimeter, which is quite uncommon, as most guys uh, use 165. The reason behind it is because it helps me get some extra power especially if you know, I have small distance to get to a big jump. 
I, I feel I can put you know a bit more strength on uh, on the chain and just get that extra speed. The chain ring I chose to ride a 3040, so that's the same that I always ride, and the reason behind it is because my cassette uh, on the back is an E13 and E13 offer a 9 tooth cassette. So that's really convenient, that allows you to get your chain ring a bit higher from the ground. Derailleur and 7-speed shifter. Um, yeah, it's been really, really good so far. Uh, the clutch is quite rigid, so that makes the bike a bit more quiet and, uh, and super reliable. When you, when you change gear, yeah, it's really precise, really nice. For components, I'm using Thompson, uh, Thompson seat post, seat clamp and handlebars. Uh, the bar I'm riding right now are 755mm, which is what I'm riding um, every day. For rampage, I don't want any narrower, just because of the big impact and you know the trails are not narrow, there is no trees to clip in. Uh, but I normally can go a little bit narrower on uh, urban downhill tracks. For brakes, uh, this is new this year, I'm riding for Ace Components. Those are the new Ace Dominion A4. Uh, as I said on the video of my trail bike, they won components of the year uh, on pink bike. I love them, super powerful, good modulation, uh, very reliable. It's important to have you know, a brake very consistent, especially at Rampage. Some of the features behind me are you know, really gnarly and you need to have complete trust on your brake. So yeah, stock to be on Ace. Uh, two or three rotor, obviously front and back. Same as last year, uh, this is the Ergon SMD2 seat. Um, it's a downhill seat, so it's a bit shorter and that allows to get a bit more tire clearance. And for grips, I'm always riding the G1 Enduro and they have two sizes, either slim or regular, and I'm riding the regular size. For pedals, um, you know, as you, as you know, I always ride a clipped in, well, most of the time. And uh, this year I'm riding the time pedal. So this is a new pedal that you'll see in the future. Um, Loving the system, it's the attack system, you know, really reliable, gives you lots of play and yeah, really enjoying it. Uh, to me, riding clips is, is just more fun and that's the reason why I do it. Last year I've done, at Trompage, I've done one run in flats and one run in clips. And uh, yeah, this year I'm just going full clips. For the chain, I'm riding the KMC 11 speed gold chain. Um, very light, very reliable, works with any brand of transmission. It's, to me, the strongest chain I've ever had. I actually never broke any KMC chain. Um, and yeah, gold finish looks really good. Obviously here, I'm not gonna pedal much as it's, you know, really steep, but it's really good to know that, you know, you got like a really, really reliable chain. And the uh, last little detail on the bike, I have a, a custom headset cap with my name on it uh, by Slicey Product, which is a French company. So that was my Cube 215 2019 uh, Rampage Edition bike check. Thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, don't hesitate to give a like. If you have any questions, any comments, let me know in the comment section and uh, hope to see you on YouTube or on the trails. See you!